an experience that I had this afternoon on my way home from work. So sometimes like things happen in your life where God kind of just puts you in a place where you're meant to help. And so today I did something I normally wouldn't do. So weird thing was I was coming home from work and I was actually going to take a different way home today because I planned to head to church. But instead I took a different way and I ended up driving down the street and coming across like this really weird scene. And there was somebody that was just lying in the roadway. There were several cars that were stopped and a couple that were on the side of the road. So immediately I thought somebody got hit by a car. And for me, that's kind of a trigger for me because I've been hit by a car and not realizing when it happened, but looking back at it years later, that nobody came to my aid to like help me. Nobody came. Just the driver stopped, which I was thankful for to help me, but like no bystanders, nobody who witnessed the accident stopped. And so normally I'm a type of person that would be like, okay, there's people out there, they're handling it. I'm just going to move on with my day. And I just said, you know what, today I'm going to be that person and I'm going to pull over to the side of the road. It's a lady who pulled over, I guess she was the first car. And we kind of chatted briefly. She said, yeah, I was driving up the road and what I thought was like a bag in a road ended up being a person. And there was another man that was there. And so there was this young girl, young, beautiful Hispanic girl who just decided that she just couldn't live anymore. Just, just decided she was going to walk out into the middle of the of this busy street and just lie down and hope somebody would run her over. And so I just said to myself, I just pulled over, looked out, got out of the car and walked over. And I just said, has anybody called 911 yet? And they said, yeah, we have. And so I was just kind of trying to assess like what was going on just to see if like she'd been hit. So I was like, okay, so what's happening? And they're like, well, we think she's on drugs. So I was like, oh, okay, well, as long as she's not hurt, not hit by a car, there's no blood, I think we can handle this. Just wanted to make sure she was conscious. And I just said, hey, you know, I just wanted to, you know, can you talk to me? I just want to make sure that you're awake. And so she was just kind of like in and out of it. And finally, we were able to talk to her. And the guy that was there, he just kind of looking her over and you can tell she had, was cutting, she had cutting all over her arm. What I was looking for was like, like syringe marks and stuff. So I was like, okay, like, does she have any of that on her? And like, wh like, what can we do to help you? And she was just like, you know, like, I don't want to live anymore. I'm just like, I don't want to do this anymore. So, you know, she kind of kept going in and out and I just said, you know what, like, let's figure out like, how can we help you? What can we do? And I only just said, you know, the only thing that's going to help is I need to go to rehab. Man that was there, he actually, from what he shared, a recovering drug addict. And he was like in a perfect place at the right time. And he said, I was just in your, just in your position just a few years ago. And I can tell you it will get better, but you have to go to rehab and you have to get help now. And so she said, yeah, that's, she said, I just, I need to go to rehab. About that time, the sheriff's department showed up. Um, what's going on here? And we're like, well, we think she's, we think she's on something. And she has expressed that she needs help and she needs to go to rehab. You know, basically like my main thing was just trying to talk to her. She just says, I don't care anymore. Like nobody cares about me. And I just really stressed her. And all these people stop their vehicles to walk out to help you because we care and we, we care about you and we don't even know you but we cared enough to know that you were struggling, that we wanted to stop. So I just felt super strong emotions about like just the whole experience. I'm just glad that I had like the courage to actually stop today because I'm, I'm not that person, but I just hope she gets help. The sheriff's officer, or sheriff's guy, anyway, detained her. So he ended up taking her back to the sheriff's station and they're gonna get her some help. So it was pretty short exchange. It probably, I would say, was like five minutes out of my life, but it's five minutes out of my life that I won't forget of these times where there's these people have like these moments in their lives of crises and everyone's too afraid or like trying to be too politically correct to try to help someone or to call the police put on like a mental health hold because they're afraid they're going to be mad at them later. And it just comes to a point and I was on a an advisory call yesterday about public health and I feel like it's all kind of coming together and alignment is that you know we need people on the streets we need like 
professionals and people in the community that when we come across these people that are in crisis is that I think we can prevent a lot of the stuff that's happening. If people stop and take the time and get them help immediately, it's not going to get every situation and it's going to take that person making the choice to get help. But it was just one of those moments where I said, you know, it's really a community effort that we have to have solutions and we all have to work together and do our part that if we see someone who's struggling to stop and ask if they need help or if they're making threats online to report it immediately and to follow up, don't just expect, expect the police just to handle it. Extra step for people who are are struggling, um, especially people who are suicidal. Like it just hits something hard in my heart that I, I'm just really, really glad I stopped. And I'm not like patting myself on the back. You know, I think sometimes God puts things on your heart and I just was like, you know, I want to check on this person. And luckily there was other people that were there to help, but everyone played the role, especially the guy that was there who had already gone through rehab. It was instrumental that he walked a lot. I've never done drugs, so I don't know. I don't know that experience, but having him there to be able to to share like his experience and tell her like, you have to go to rehab. You have to accept the help. This is the day and you're going to have to go with the sheriffs to get the help, but we're not going to leave you here to take your life because you're worth it and that we care about you and you have worth and you're valuable and we want you here on this earth with us. It was really kind of just a powerful moment. There was another lady that was there who happened to be a social worker and she worked in the area. She actually thought it was one of her clients. So that's why she stopped because she was like, oh my God, you know, this is one of my clients I've been working with who's having a, a mental health crisis. So it's, it was just kind of one of those things, all these different people, different walks of life, people of all different races, but we all wanted to help this person who was in crisis. I'm, I'm just like really big on helping people. If you know someone who's struggling, who has suicidal thoughts, do whatever you can. If someone is making any type of threat whatsoever, it doesn't even matter if you think they're joking, just call it in. Um, have the police go check it out. They'll send their mental health people, whoever, um, so that they can get support and find out like what is the root cause. It's always best to just err on the side of caution. Things could happen. People take their lives. People com commit these horrible incidences that we've been seeing across our country. And it was just because people were trying to be polite. And when someone's having a mental health crisis, it's not the time to sit back. It's the time to speak up. It's the time to reach out to professionals to help them. If you are having suicidal thoughts, definitely reach out for help. Dial 988 reach out to the police. You can take yourself to the ER. Tell someone they will walk with you through this. And we don't want you to think that you're alone. We want to make sure that you get the help that you need because you're worthwhile. You deserve to be on this earth and you have so much to contribute. So as I finish up this kind of like reflection of the moment, I was driving them and she got detained. They put her in the back of the sheriff's patrol car. And then I started thinking about her and I said, man, this is this beautiful girl. I, I don't know what her story is. I don't know what she's been through. But when I was just thinking of this dark moment, I just thought of like the hope that I have for her. The prayers that I have for her is that she's able to accept the help. And of course, I said a prayer as soon as I left her, but to accept the help that she's going to receive and that she'll be able to get help and get treatment and to be able to move forward with her life and that her life has meaning that's going to help so many people and so my hope for her is that she'll be able to move forward and sober and to be clean and so that she can move on and impact other people but it's just so sad to see somebody so young have no life no joy no light left in them and it just makes me so sad and to know that there's so many people out there that are suffering behind smiles and wealth and you know relationships and success and um they're having these mental health crises and they go undetected because people are hiding and you know fortunately for this girl she had decided to have a mental health crisis in a very public area on a major road and luckily there were people who are around and resources in the area that got to her very quickly 
within, gosh, I, I don't know how long that incident, I think um, by the time I pulled over, they said, you know, literally they were just talking to her for less than like two minutes. So the cops got there pretty quick within three to four minutes of the call. So they were really quick, but you know, we were able to get her that, that help, that critical help that she needed quickly. Just a message of just, if you see something, say something, if you see someone who is going through a mental health crisis and you don't feel safe enough to deal with it. The situation was a little bit different because she was female. She wasn't acting erratically other than lying in the road. So I felt comfortable enough. I didn't feel like she was gonna like stab me or something, but I evaluated the scene before I got out of my car. If it was a different situation where guy was like really strung out, I might have just stayed in the car and just called the police. But you just have to kind of evaluate that for yourself if you wanna get involved. But to do something, if you are a person that's a lot more reserved like I am, um, even if you can just get on your phone and, and call the police and just report to them like what you see, what's happening, and that, you know, there's a person in crisis, this is what's going on, and just tell the dispatcher like everything that's happening so that whatever officer comes on scene that they at least have a clear indication of what's going on and so that they can assess it appropriately. There's a lot of police departments that do have mental health units that will come out. They won't send out a patrol to go deal with that. Um, and that's kind of more of the model that we're starting to see across the country. But um, there's a lot of departments that don't have that yet. They don't have the funding for it. And so it was really like these civilians that just happened to be driving by. And I was one of them that just said, you know what, this person needs some type of help. And we're gonna call the professionals, the professional that we knew at the time to help us was the fire department and the police department were, this basically took over the scene. If you are someone that you know, or even maybe don't know, and you have any concerns about their mental health, ask questions, ask direct questions, ask them if they're having suicidal thoughts or feeling that they wanna hurt themselves or hurt others and don't be afraid to report it. Better to be safe than sorry. Actually, somebody sends you a text message, phone call. Prior to calling their family, just call the police. In any situation, they should always be number one because they're always gonna be the first on the scene. Other family, contact their family second. Always call the police first. Um, they're always gonna be the first responders to go deal with the situation and give them as much information that you have so that they can go in and safely deal with that person if you know that they potentially could have weapons, if they have drugs on scene, or even the potential for aggression just to give them a heads up so that they can go home safely to their family. If you or someone you know is having any of those, those symptoms, if anybody is online, social media, and chat rooms that are making any type of mental health threats, you can always just report it into your local PD they have people that can track down even a digital print. They can they can figure all of that stuff out. But it's always best to just err on the side of caution. You don't know if somebody's, um, you know, playing a joke or not. But why, why just kind of shrug it off? It really could be somebody that is having a, a serious crisis, and you might save a life.